We are back. It is fight season, and we have a returning guest. We've got the BKFC welterweight champion. We've got Austin No Doubt Trout. Austin, thank you so much for coming back, bro. How are you? I'm good, man. Thank you. Thank you, Jess, for having me. Yeah, fresh off a win. I know it was like a month ago, but, uh, you know, I know we've, we've been meaning to catch up, but fresh off just an absolute domination of Rico Franco at BKFC Marbella out in Spain. You and I were both in Europe around the same time. Before yeah. we get into the fight, how was how was it being in Europe and just traveling around and all that? Marbella, Spain. I'm in love with, with Spain, period. Uh, yeah. It, it, beautiful city, beautiful country, beautiful people, great food. Uh, it was good weather. Uh, everything was great about that that trip. I saw you carrying around like a camera and stuff on your social media. You, you were like doing the full tourist thing. Oh, yeah, were, yeah, yeah. I was trying to experience everything I could, you know, even though I was there for a job. Uh, right. But, you know, I was, I was definitely making memories. Uh, you know, I brought my family too. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's, yeah. it's perfect. It's like you can you can get your family a vacation while you do work. It's like it's perfect for you, right? Absolutely. It was killing, you know, three birds in one stone. For sure. Exactly. Well, you got the dominant win. Uh, I know it's obviously it's, been, it's a month ago, but just sort of how you feeling about your performance and how, uh, you know, how everything played out at that event. I, I'm still happy about the performance. I'm, you know, it was a dominant win. Honestly, I saw myself stopping Rico Franco. Yeah. So, yeah. Not not too disappointed. I didn't get the the stoppage, but you know, I'm not gonna beat myself up over it. Um, I'm looking forward to next. You know, I like to have something to focus on for for you know a few months. It was just focus on Rico. You know, forget what's next. I, I, he's what's now, and now you know we're past Rico. Like, what's next? I need something else to focus back on. Is there any any movement on that? Is there any uh, any talks of a new opponent? Anything going down? No talks officially of any opponents, but Philman did announce that he's going to announce an eight man tournament, and I don't care what weight that is. I'm trying to get in. I'll be I, 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 I was going to ask you about. It. I have that on my notes here. So let's just since you brought it up. Yeah, so he, so we actually spoke to, to David Feldman uh, like a couple months ago, and he said that he was going to be making this announcement about this this t tournament that be the biggest tournament in the history of combat sports. The idea of it is that it's twenty five million dollars to the winner. There's going to be like a thousand people trying out, and then they're going to narrow it down to like twenty four fighters or something like that, and then. Uh, once you get to the final eight, that's when you're fighting for like the real money. That's my yeah. understanding of it, right? right. Um, winner gets 25 mil. So you're saying that you want in, you want to, you want right. to participate in this tournament. For sure, for sure. You know that's that's gonna create activity and, and money and uh, excitement for for not just my life, but for the combat world. Yeah, and I want to be a part of that. Do you, do you have any idea, like, uh, is, are they going to be going outside of BKFC? Or are they going to be inviting people from other promotions? Do you have any idea or are you not sure? I have no idea. I just know yeah. I need to be in there um, for my chance at that that prize. You know, this is, it feels like the Willy Wonka's golden ticket, kind of. I mean, based on the way things are going for you right now, it kind of feels like you would have to be one of the uh, one of the favorites for that tournament, Austin. I'm not going to lie. Thank you. I, I think so myself, which is why I need to get in that tournament because I'm, I, I'm very confident that I can win it. I would, and I, and would I, like, I really don't care what weight. You just, I need time. If, you, if it's a big weight, I need some time to get, get my weight up. That's what I was going to ask. I mean, like, how do you do a tournament? It would have to be a specific weight. I mean, you, otherwise you'd have guys like fighting who fight at like 150 versus guys fighting at 200. It's like, how do you, how do you, dis how do you determine that? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Yeah, but you know, as far as street fights go, I've fought in some heavyweights before. And okay, again, if it was like, what if it was a no weight class type tournament? I'd that's still be UFC down to do it. it. Yeah, that's I would right. still be down to do it. So, so if you're you're saying that even if you were like you know like one seventy ish and you've got to fight a guy that's like two twenty, you're still down. I'm still down. He's gonna be slow. You know, the best he could do is try to put his weight on me, but right. I'm, I'm a scurry, you know, scrappy motherfucker. So getting in and around big dudes pause is, is kind of, I think will be to my benefit, lower center of gravity, you know? Yeah. 
I, I mean, I, I love that idea. I love that idea. I think that I think that you'd do well in that tournament. And I mean, I, I don't want to. I'm not trying to like grease you up too much here, but I mean, you're you're sort of entering some uncharted waters here for for BKFC fighter. I know you've only had a few fights, but it, it's it's pretty clear that like you bring a set of skills from boxing over that a lot of guys in BKFC just simply you know they just don't have. It's not a knock on it. It's just that you have experience against the top boxers in the world that gives you an edge that that other guys don't have do you feel like you're sort of entering that territory where when it's all said and done you're going to be recognized as the greatest bare knuckle boxer of all time i that's that's absolutely ain't no ain't no question in my mind because i'm only getting better yeah i'm about to start working specifically with some muay thai uh coaches to just to get that clinch and, and that that hand Muay Thai skills down, you know. Right. I'm just trying to add to my base. Box is a good base, but you know, there's more things that I'm allowed to do that that allows me to learn more things. Yeah, because um, I know last time I asked you if you'd be on the uh, the, the Mount Rushmore of bare knuckle, but now I'm yeah. now I'm wondering should we should we up the ante a little bit for you? <laughs> I'm going for the, I'm gonna be the John Jones of bare knuckle. There you go. I love that. I love that. There's my that's my headline right there. You just gave it to me. <laughs> fellow um, New Mexican too. Shout out to John. I'm sorry. Jones. Say say that again. I'm sorry. A fellow New Mexican. He trains out of New Mexico. There you go. There you go. How how is the Muay Thai training going? By the way, are you uh, learning some things that you didn't? You know, like how is it? How is it going from like boxing? training boxing all your life to training in Muay Thai and MMA and things like that to, uh, to really expand your palate, so to speak. So far, we're just kind of sticking with the part that I know, right? The boxing part of the Muay Thai boxing, um, knee checks, legs, you know, that part we're kind of leaving away until maybe off season. I'm like, let's, let's, let's try it. Um, but right now we're just kind of sticking with the part that I know and I'm feeling comfortable, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing, uh, that that's like I'm like ah oh, I need to practice this even though I need to practice all of it. There's no concept that I don't understand, and right now we're just trying to get the concepts. I love that. I, 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 I it's no it's normally you know guys that get into MMA that go into boxing. You know it's not a it's it, it's, it's just, true, but you know you know why because <laughs> uh, boxers, including me, we're scared to go to MMA. I'm, yeah. I'm, and I'm not. I'm not just saying them, but me. Me too. Yeah. BKFC is not quite MMA, and even as a bare knuckle champion or fighter, I wouldn't do MMA. Right. And, you know, a lot of them are like, "Well, why not? You already do bare knuckle." I was like, "Yeah, it's a bare knuckle. You still got a bare elbow, bare knee, and a bare foot." You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Exactly. I'll still take the bare knuckle. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. It's uh it's it's much easier much less to think about when you're uh, when it's just when it's just hands. Um all right. So since I I've been talking to people about this all week and since I've got a real boxer here, a guy that's really been in the ring, I got to ask you about the Mike Tyson and Jake Paul fight that just went down. Did you uh did you get a chance to to, to watch it? Yes, yes. We well, you know, as, as much as we could. Uh as Loading much as Netflix's and... streaming was allowing you to watch, exactly, exactly, it was, we loaded a lot, but yeah, we we got to see it. And, and shout out to Jake Paul for not humiliating my hero. You know what I mean? He carried Mike, and that was my biggest one of my biggest concerns was that you know Jake is a big, strong dude, and he was going to stretch Mike out. We'd hate to see that. I'd hate to see that, and, and Jake didn't make us see that. Yeah, so that, that's where I wanted to go with this because I think there are like two schools of thought on this. Some people who are saying that Jake took his foot off the gas because he clearly was just uh, trying not to hurt you know, a 58-year-old man. Yeah. Other people saying Mike Tyson was paid off to not hurt Jake Paul. And there, there are two schools. And I, I'm having trouble like understanding where those people are coming from. Like Sylvester Stallone, who's a good friend with Mike Tyson, he said that uh, that that Mike was basically like paid to throw the fight. Uh, you know, Oscar De La Hoya, one of the biggest promoters uh, in the world, said that Mike Tyson was taking it easy on Jake Paul. What's what's your message to people who believe that? I mean, they they must not have watched the fight, but he was gassed, you know, from the third round. 
And and in the beginning, maybe the first or second round, we're like, maybe he could, he might be able. Oh no, he's tired. And and I I think really what they're doing is trying to just sow some seeds of doubt, right? Uh, to to maybe it doesn't look like from memory because you know memory and reality are two different things. People's memory be like maybe maybe oh he did pull it yeah did the like and then now you have a clip where it looks like Mike Tyson pulled the right hand. Um, right. When really he was just too tired to throw that right hand. So that's what I thought when I saw that clip. I thought that he just his timing just wasn't there, and and mm-hmm. that he just either his timing wasn't there, or, yeah, like or he was exhausted. Um, and in my response though, when you mentioned how Jake, good on Jake for not trying to humiliate him. You know, Mike was going through a blood transfusion. Apparently, he he tweeted after the fight that he got a blood transfusion. Yeah. When he had a, he had like a, uh, what was it, a, a hernia? Not a hernia, I'm sorry. He said he had eight blood transfusions. Yeah, right. Like, and, Buddy and, almost died. And, and they knew that at the time. They know, like, Jake Paul and them knew that. So if you're afraid of hurting them, my pushback would be, like, why make the fight at all if you know that this guy's going through it? Do you still feel like it was, uh, like, a good do, – do you still feel like um, it was okay that they decided to go through with that fight even if Jake Paul didn't want to hurt him in the end. Yes. Yes, it was good that they still went through it. Now that nobody got hurt, and, and Mike Tyson, from what I understand, is fine. Um, yeah. He made some good money. We got we got two, in my opinion, fight of the year candidate fights on that undercard. The Mario Barrios fight, the Jesus Ramos, and... Uh, um, Amanda Serrano versus Katie Taylor rematch. Those two were one, like, we should be having replays of that fight on Netflix, you know, throughout the year. So it was a good night for boxing. Also, the females made a record breaking purse for female boxing. Wonderful night for boxing. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad. And, and, and a lot of people, uh, and it's crazy because now that even though Tyson didn't look anything like the old Tyson just the other day, you know, one of my wife's friends texts me asking about gloves. Hi, my, my son's like obsessed with Mike Tyson right now. He, he wants to start boxing. Right. What kind of gloves should I get? You know what I mean? So, so they went and go, they went to go see what, what Tyson's all about. And they went and they saw that, you know, the eighties, nineties Tyson, who was the monster. The, I mean, like I say, he, he was one of my heroes growing up and so that was very good for boxing yeah, i'm glad they didn't use that as as the end all be all for what tyson really was and they went to go see well, why would we make a big deal right and i believe i i i don't i didn't double check this but i did see some reports on it that that katie taylor serrano fight apparently it was the highest watched like women's sporting event ever apparently look at that look at that that's a great yeah. night for boxing yeah great so- night for women's boxing yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and I think it was 65 million people at its peak were watching, uh, were watching on Netflix. Just uh, I- incredible numbers, no doubt. So regardless of the fact that it was uh, probably a fight that maybe shouldn't have been sanctioned, you still feel like it was – you still, you still think that this sort of fight, that booking these sorts of fights is good for boxing so long as it's promoting, like – the all the up and comers on the on the undercard and like the or, or just real fight. boxing as long as they're yeah. they're implementing real bo- for, for let me give you a, for instance of what is killing boxing is still killing boxing Floyd Mayweather the circus that he's putting on doesn't have an ounce of real boxing in it whereas as I said before Jake Paul gave us two fight of the year candidates some record breaking purses record breaking breaking views for some real boxing. His fight specifically maybe was not real boxing, but it was coupled up with, with some real shots, real fights. We got to see some great up and comers, some well established unified uh, champions, uh, and everything in between. A Floyd Mayweather fight where it's him versus Gotti, you know, it's just a circus up and down. There's no real boxing. The only person that makes any money is Floyd Mayweather. You know, it's, it's that's not what's helping helping boxing out at all. Right. That's what's draining the game. Yeah, giving it a bad name. 
Yeah, I, I think that it's it, it's interesting you put it that way because if you go online, you look on the internet, a lot of people would say that Jake is hurting boxing more than he's helping, and I, I kind of I kind of fall in line with you a little bit more where I think that. Yeah, no. Every fight, every fight, the whole card gets paid. There was one time when Jake Paul card got canceled. I want to say it might have been the first time with the, the Tyson. Anyway, and he still paid every fighter on the card. Yeah, their whole purse. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's funny because a lot of fighters afterwards started like big time fighters. We're talking Daniel Dubois. We're talking, uh, Arthur Betterbeev sending D they putting out messages to Jake Paul, like, Hey, it's time for you to fight a real boxer here. Uh, I don't think Jake would ever accept it, but do you think it's time for Jake to do something like that? How many fights he have? Maybe six and one. He's six and one, I think. I think he's like nine and one. I okay, think nine and eight, one. Eight, or eight, nine or ten. Somewhere between eight and ten, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when I was, I, the first undefeated real fighter I fought was when I was about what, twelve and 0, 13 and zero. Okay. And that's when I fought on ESPN, right? Other than that, it was just, you know, journeyman, journeyman. Maybe there was a. A couple guys that had good records, but you know they weren't supposed to be good. This is the process. He, ain't, I had an extensive amateur career. You know what I mean? I was an Olympic alternate. Yeah, right. over, over 100 amateur fights, international, all that, and I still took that route. Um, by 10 and 0, I was, I was calling. I was like, all right, you know, let me get a, let me get a real body in there, I'm ready to go. Let me get one of these champions. But you know, the baby steps I took was necessary for my development. He's just developing. Now, he, he fought Tommy Fury, who was an undefeated fighter. He lost, right. but he gave him a good fight, and, and that was a step up. Um, he's just taking – and you know what? To be honest, if he, if he loses or gets gets blasted or, or takes a fight that he's not ready for, that stops everybody else's gravy train. Everybody that was on that undercard that was getting those, you know, record-breaking break, record purses – and record-breaking views doesn't get that no more. So yeah. leave Jake Paul alone. Let him do whatever he wants to do um, as long as these fighters are getting some love. I, you know, it's, it's an interesting point because I think the difference is here is that people are forgetting is like, yes, Jake Paul is just following the path. Like you mentioned, like what you had to follow where you're fighting, you know, uh, journeyman fighters before you get your big fights, you know, they get, getting you some, you know, your footing under you. But you're also not, at the time, not one of like the biggest stars in the world who's headlining the event. Jake Paul has to headline the event. So because, because Jake Paul has to headline it and he's the main event, people are perceiving that as, oh, that means he needs to like fight Canelo or fight, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. Like some, you know, uh, David Benavidez or something like that to prove that you're like or the real deal where it's just like, hey, actually, it's more so Jake Paul is the business of of putting on the event. Exactly. Not necessarily. He's not necessarily going to. Uh, yeah, I, and I agree with you. He's not necessarily ready for these sorts of fights. And I agree mm -hmm. with you. I think the longer they can put this on the better it's going to be in the long run. And I do yeah. think Jake actually wants a big fight at some point. I do think he wants it. but And, you know, he honestly, from what I understand, he puts in the work. He has real six, eight-week camps. He's put, he's, he's getting up in the morning. He's yeah. running, sparring. He's training. You know, he's, he's, he's not just like, oh, I want to be a boxer, and then just jumped into it. It's like, from what I understand, he's putting in the work. So if that's the case, he's going to get better, and he'll be ready to have some good fights with some good fighters. And, you know, even win, lose, or draw, at that point, we we shouldn't care. Like, go ahead, go be great, or dare to be great. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, you know, Feldman did say that he wants to see Jake and BKFC one day. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you see that as a possibility? Do you think we could see Jake Paul fighting in bare knuckle? I, I don't know, man. I think he's too much of a pretty boy. He don't want to get that face cut up. There you but, go. But, you know, he is crazy, so... <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Mike. Yeah, I think it, it would have to be like crazy amount of money. It'd have to be like Mike, yeah, Perry, Mike Perry rematch or something in bare knuckle, something like that, you know. Or you, right. maybe, 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 maybe it'd be you. I'll take it. Seventy five pounds. I will figure out how to make it work. Yeah, exactly. Well, he he used to fight at like one seventy, so I don't know. Yeah, he he, he bulked up. Maybe he um, could he could stay off the 
the the extra sauce and, and he could, he'll lose some of that weight real fast. There you, there you go. There you go. Uh, one thing I want to ask, just a little fun one. We got Thanksgiving coming up here in the States. Um, you know, a lot of you, we were talking about boxing fans that love to talk crap. Uh, just combat sports fans, UFC fans, BKFC fans, they love to t- talk crap about fighters. And I'm just curious, what is it? What is something that you think that combat sports fans should be thankful for? <laughs> for first and foremost, the fighters. Yeah. You should be thankful for the fighters. If you didn't have a promotion, if you didn't have the TV, if you didn't have anything that you think was is would make these fights amazing, but you had two guys in your neighborhood that were down to have a fight, you all could go to the nearest place and watch them squab it out, and that would be some great entertainment, no matter how good or bad they're fighting, they were in fighting. Yeah. So at the core of it, I mean, you remember in the schoolyard, two kids just wanted to start fighting. Everybody would get around, and that's what everybody talked about for the rest of the day, especially if it was a good one. You could talk about it for the rest of the week. So everybody should be thankful for the fighters. Me and my friends are still talking about fights we saw in high school 20 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, uh, exactly. Austin Trout, you are the man. Thank you so much for your time. And, uh, yeah, man, we're going to – next when you have a big fight, I want to do this again when, when your next fight comes up, whether it's the tournament, whether it's your next big fight, because uh, I'm monitoring you closely here. I, I believe in that, that, that John Jones line, that you're going to be the John Jones of BKFC. I don't think we're far off. I think we got to get a few hey, more fights. Hey, I, I appreciate it, and I, and I respect your opinion, so that means a lot. There you go. Hey, I appreciate you, man, and uh, best of luck, okay? Thank you, man.